My name is Bettina and uh, I'm a lab director here at the fertility clinic in Skive in Denmark. Uh, I've been working with uh, IVF for 18 years and uh, I have a master in clinical embryology from the University of Fleet. And uh, I also have the ESFER certification as a senior clinical embryologist. The clinic here in Skive is a public unit and it was established in 1996. Uh, on a yearly basis, we do around 600 IVF and ICSI cycles. We do 250 frozen cycles and 200 intrauterine inseminations. Uh, we have the specialized function of treating patients positive of hepatitis B and C. And uh, we mostly treat patients from Denmark, but we also treat patients from abroad. Uh, we focus a lot on quality here. And that's also why our clinic is uh, ISO 9001 certified. We've been uh, using Vitrolife Media for almost 20 years. And uh, we are one of the clinics in Denmark with the best results. And even though we have uh, good results, uh, we are always looking for things to improve. One of the things we wanted to improve was our fertilization rate. And uh, I've been not quite happy with our fertilization rate for some years and I've been trying to change things in the lab that didn't seem to improve the results. So I made contact with uh, Vitrolife to get their support and see if we could do and find any changes that could help us. My name is Jakub Geier. Uh, I'm an embryologist with Vitrolife and part of my duties involve supporting clinics um, from all over the world and um, see how we can help them improve the results um, if there's any problems, uh, we try to identify these problems and see how we can um, improve the results that the cl uh, clinics are getting. I was contacted by Bettina uh, because they realized that they would like to improve their fertilization rates. Now, it's quite difficult for a clinic that is already achieving good results to improve their results even more. So we started to analyze uh, all the different steps along the way, uh, from egg collection all the way to embryo culture, and we identified uh, certain steps that we could make improvements on. And we made these suggestions then to Bettina to see if they can ultimately increase their um, fertilization rates even more. In order to create a very stable culture environment for the gametes and the embryos, um, there are certain basic things that we need to address. Um, those are temperature, pH, and osmolality. And it's quite often very small changes that we often overlook. Um, that can help us make improvements. Um, it's so important to uh, address these issues from a very early stage, um, so from the air collection onwards. Um, we know that very small changes um, can have a very big impact later on in embryo culture. In our IVF culture systems, it is very important to create as close as possible to a stress-free environment for our embryos. It is well known that whenever embryos experience stress, they have to adapt um, during that time and during this adaptation they actually can't spend their energy on growing which means that it has an impact on their developmental potential. So by keeping these three factors um, temperature, pH and osmolality as stable as possible means that you are able to uh, give the embryo opportunity to spend energy on growing and not adapting to a stressful environment. I do enjoy getting contacted by the clinics, um, whether that's for problem solving or to identify um, areas where they can actually improve their results. Um, it's often not that easy to initially identify these uh, areas of improvement, um, but it certainly is a great opportunity once we do find them and we are able to work together um, to create the solutions and get them to improve their success rates. We found some basic things that we could change in our lab and I think it's important not to change too many things at one time. So in the beginning we made some few, a few changes and by doing that we saw an increase of 9% uh, in our fertilization rate for IVF. And uh, later on we did additional changes and, and again we saw a further 5% increase in, in the fertilization rate. So I think it's very important to have some additional eyes to look at what you're doing in the lab. Sometimes we are stuck in the things we do and we cannot see uh, how we can change and what we can change.